Few plants pique the curiosity of onlookers more than carnivorous plants. Insects pollinate plants. Why would plants eat them? You may be wondering. But there is no need to jump to that quite yet. We'll cover why this happens in great detail shortly. One may be surprised to see something so commonly perceived as exotic being covered on a channel that tends to focus on New England botany. Rest assured, Saracenia purpurea, the purple pitcher plant, is a treasured and iconic component of northeastern bogs, fens, and similar nutrient-poor but wet habitats. Despite the common assumption that carnivorous plants are only found in faraway, remote, tropical jungles, Saracenia purpurea is a northern trending species. The farthest north occurring member of its kind, it is especially abundant in the Canadian Maritimes, New England, New York, New Jersey, and the Great Lakes region. But it is found as far north as northern Ontario and Quebec, with specimens being found as far to the northwest as Canada's northwest territories. In the southeast, it is typically replaced by its more southern trending cousins, but can be found in narrow strips along the coast of the Carolinas and infrequently in Appalachia. Having been introduced to Europe and the Pacific Northwest, it is by a wide margin the most widespread species of pitcher plant. As mentioned earlier, the habitat of Saracenia purpurea needs to be constantly wet and nutrient poor. This typically includes bogs, fens, and occasionally swales, acidic grasslands that are frequently inundated with water. Typically nestled in among sphagnum moss, Saracenia purpurea needs wet feet, full sun, and nearly absent competition to thrive. Undeterred by the cold, this species needs cold winters to allow for seed germination. Contrary to the term carnivorous, pitcher plants are not technically eating their prey that is, consuming them for energy. Rather, they are breaking them down for fertilizer, as many necessary plant nutrients are inaccessible in these habitat types. The plants are still getting their energy from the sun, they just need to be a bit creative to get their vitamins. More on this part of their anatomy in just a bit. Saracenia purpurea shares habitat with many fascinating species. Despite this habitat being hard to thrive in, it is very biodiverse. What passes for an overstory are a handful of conifer species, Pinus rigida, the pitch pine, a pine species found seemingly anywhere difficult growing conditions occur, Larix laricina, tamarack, a much more common and robust species north of this location, essentially seeking refuge in this habitat, and Picea mariana, the black spruce, another northern trending species capitalizing on its ability to tolerate what more common species in the area will not. Hardwoods are found in the swampier, more grown-in sections of this habitat and include Acerubrum, the red maple, a species that typically occurs in swamps and wetland edges from Canada all the way down to Florida, and Betula papulifera, the gray birch, a tree much like pitch pine that can be found anywhere but comfortable growing conditions. Co-occurring shrubs and herbs include numerous plants in the blueberry family, Ericaceae. Camadaphne colliculata, or leatherleaf, is dominant in the fen and bog habitats of the region, accounting for the majority of the biomass making up the sea of green surrounding the open water in the center of the bog. Andromeda polifolia, the inappropriately named bog rosemary, and Calmia polifolia, or bog laurel, share similar leaf textures and have the same epithet. Calmia angustifolia, sheep laurel, is a larger, showier cousin to bog laurel, but can only sustain itself on the edges of this habitat. Found amongst massive groves of highbrush blueberry, Vaccinium corymbosum, and the beautiful purple blooms of rhododendron canadens, the rotora, one of several native rhododendron species associated with bogs, fens, swamps, and other difficult to grow in conditions. And just to hammer home how much diversity in Ericaceae there is here, we also find the bog cranberry, Vaccinium oxycocos, a close relative of the cultivated cranberry, which can also be found in similar habitats. But Ericaceous plants are not the sole inhabitants here. Various species of carnivorous bladderworts in the genus Utricularia can be found in habitats like this, using their roots, rather than modified leaves, to trap and ensnare microscopic protozoa. 
Several species of sundew are also found in New England. Here we see a relatively common species, the spatulate-leaved sundew, Drosera intermedia. These are close relatives of the famous Venus flytrap, which can be found south of us in the Carolinas. The sticky glandular leaves lay in wait to ensnare and wrap around unfortunate prey. Saracenia purpurea is in the family Saraceniaceae, nested well within the order Ericales. These plants are considered the New World or American pitcher plants. The family contains three genera, Saracenia, native primarily to the United States' southeastern corner, with Saracenia purpurea being the odd one out found much further north and west than its cousins such as Saracenia flava or Saracenia alata, Darlingtonia, containing the sole species Darlingtonia californica, native to the northwestern corner of California and southwestern corner of Oregon, and Heliumphora, a genus of South American pitcher plants relegated to highly specialized plateau habitats known as tapuis, which rise high above the Brazilian, Colombian, and Venezuelan rainforests. It is also worth note that this morphology has evolved twice more in completely separate lineages. The Old World, simply meaning the east side of the Atlantic, has a completely separate family of pitcher plants in a completely different order, all found in the genus Nepenthes, the sole genus in the family Nepenthesiae. Being in the order Caryophyllales, these Old World are simply tropical pitcher plants, share a more recent common ancestor with cacti and spinach than they do with our native pitcher plants. Additionally, there is a single species known as Cephalotus follicularis, the sole species in its family, Cephalotaceae, nested within the order Oxalidales, native to southwestern Australia. The morphology of all pitcher plants is fairly similar. The pitchers are nothing more than highly modified leaves, flat as they emerge, then gradually opening into a hollow tube. The red flush common on many pitchers are betalane pigments, essentially plant sunscreen and evidence of their high demand for sunlight. Pitchers fill with water, as well as digestive enzymes and even symbiotic insects and bacteria that aid in nutrient capture by consuming and defecating the prey within. Near the top of the plant, small incurved hairs help keep prey from escaping. Above that, a lip known as the peristome forms a ring around the exit. The peristome secretes nectar, acting as bait for unsuspecting insects. Above this, we see a flap known as the operculum, highly reduced on Saracenia purpurea, but much more prevalent in other species, which is the reason why they tend to be a bit drier on the inside. The flowers are just as fascinating as the leaves. Also heavily modified, they are in their own way a type of trap five leathery sepals and five delicate red petals, and a massive strange looking style, all act in a way that invites insects in, but forces them out in such a way that they must come in contact with one of the five stigmas, assuring pollination. Held high above the traps below, pollinating insects can count their blessings that they are only held temporarily in the flowers. The stalks of the flowers persist for some time, often into the next season, drying up and becoming woody. Long after the petals have withered away, the sepals and pistil persist as the ovary ripens. The ecological functions of Saracenia purpurea are readily apparent and tied closely to its unique morphology. It is hard to separate the two in this video format. While Saracenia purpurea is not technically endangered, and may be by far the most plentiful species in its genus, it is still protected in many locations. Its habitats often hidden and kept secret due to the high occurrence of poaching. Fortunately, many reserves, preserves, and conservation lands exist to protect their presence. They can also be ethically grown from seed, as I've done here, or purchased from a reputable native plant dealer. Never should they ever be collected from the wild. Though there are some alleged health benefits to ingesting parts of the plant, only a single study has found it effective at treating only a small number of very specific viral infections under specific conditions. A marvel in one of the crown jewels of northeastern bog and fen habitats, Saracenia purpurea is more than a simple curiosity. It is resilient, a survivor, and a wonderful example of evolution. I hope you're fortunate enough to come across it. 
and the amazing plants it shares its habitat with. Even when not in bloom, it is certainly worth the trip. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I see you again. But more importantly, I hope that you share what you've learned here with others. Thank you. Have a great day.